Hey, this is OXDF. This weekend, June 27th through 29th, Hack the Box is doing a bug bounty CTF. It's called Hack the System. And this is a super cool event because it's five web challenges, and each of them are based on real bug bounty reports from HackerOne. Uh, it's free to join. The winning team is going to get uh, a voucher for Hack the Box Academy to get the certified bug bounty hunter path and certification. Um, you can go sign up to play in this. It's free. I'll put a link in the description. You should definitely go check it out. Um, there's also two teaser challenges, one of which I get to share with you today. Um, these are actually up on the site in a separate event. Um, I'll include a link to that as well. Um, but you can go play these now um, through, I think, it's up a day or two after the event. Um, the other one is going to be uh, over on Ipsec's channel, and I'll put a link down in the description to that as well. Um, and uh, you can you know, watch this video and or go check it out. Um, today, we're going to be looking at Nova Energy. So let's dive in and take a look. All right, so I'm on the Hack the Box CTF website, and uh, over here I've already joined. Um, there's a couple different events here you can see. So there's the uh, event for this weekend that is the 27th through 29th. Go ahead and pre-register for that so you get an alert when it's coming. Um, and then there's this playground one, which is open now. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And uh, we're going to look at Nova Energy today. So the challenge says, Nova Energy is an internal web application used for file sharing system. Uh, the site can only be accessed by an employee of the Nova Energy company. Your task to go hunt for vulnerabilities that lead to any breaches in their site. Good luck and thanks for your participation. Um, I've already spawned the Docker. It takes, it takes a minute or two to spawn. I'll click here just to copy this to my clipboard and jump over into my VM. Uh, I will go ahead and just paste this right here so we can get access. And uh, this looks like the site. Um, where, the first thing I do when I, want to, when I see a site like this is I just want to explore it, look around. Um, I will make sure that I'm running through Burp. Um, I've got the, my Burp proxy set up to um, ha a handful of patterns will just automatically go through. And I believe I have actually added anything that has a colon and a port number. Go ahead and just put it through because you don't run into that when dealing with legitimate websites very often. Um, I've got a video showing how I set this up. I'll include a link to that as well. Um, but anyway, so now I'm just going to explore the site. So there's a login page here. And I can see at the bottom it's uh, going to slash login. Um, there's one for slash register. Uh, access your vault goes to slash login. Learn more just as on this page. Um, some information, nothing. This all looks kind of boilerplate-y. Um, so basically, I've got login and register. Seems to be it. There's an email address down here at the bottom, it support at novaenergy.com. Um, so I want to keep an eye on that. Uh, we can go to the login page. We could just, it's asking for an email address. We could try something like admin at novaenergy.com. Um, and maybe like one, we could try like admin and see if it works. Does not, it doesn't work. Um, we can see if we get, you know, it looks like the, e, the, the, in, the error message is the same, so we can't really enumerate um, usernames this way. Uh, we could try like a simple web inj uh, SQL injection, like do like one open quote, uh, sorry, single quote, one, uh, or one equals one comment, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and try to create an account. Sounds like a good place. Uh, we'll do OXDF at OXDF.com. Uh, with a password of OXDF, 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 OXDF. And we will agree to the services and click Create. Um, and only Nova Energy email addresses are allowed. So we'll try novaenergy.com. Try that. Registered successfully. OK, cool. Uh, OK, email verification required. So check your email for the verification link. Um, not much I can do here, right? Because I don't control that email address. Um, I don't control any Nova Energy email addresses. So I'm kind of stuck here. Um, we can jump over to Burp here. Now's always a good chance to sort of take a peek at what's happening under the hood. Um, you know, these are all the requests that I've made over time. A lot of it's JavaScript here slash login. It posts to API. There's an API going on here, sort of. Um, register. Uh, more, there's more posts to the API. Um, looks like it looks like it's using JavaScript here. And uh, JavaScript JSON here as a format for the body. Um, nothing else too super interesting. Uh, I always like to take a look and just sort of figure out how what the server is running on. Um, unfortunately, I don't get a lot of information here. It just shows me nginx. Um, nothing else too interesting in the headers. Um, we can always look at the 404 page. That's always another thing we can do. So we just like slash oxdf probably doesn't exist. Uh, and that is just the basic 404 for. Is that Nginx? I would have said, I thought that was Apache off the top of my head, but um, now I'm going to have to, now, oops, I have to go check. Not 404, 404, can I get, 
default 404 page. This is my, I, I, I make this page because I want to look it up. Interestingly enough, that looks like, is that Apache? Uh, the US, please me. Um, no, that's Flask, isn't it? Let's see, where's Flask? This pen was not found on your server. If you enter the deal manually, check and tell you. Yeah, so it's a Flask. So I can tell it's a Flask application. Well, at least it's copied the Flask 404 page. Um, so nothing to, but that's not, nothing else I can do with that. Um, let's quick, we're going to need to start. Let's run Ferrobuster. I probably should have started this already. Um, so we're going to run Ferrobuster minus U, and we will grab U, paste in, oops, paste in, and we'll get rid of Verify email here, and go ahead and run this. Um, now, what's, what, what is Ferrobuster doing here? I'm brute forcing path. So it's going to take this word list. By default, it runs um, raft medium directories. It's a good default thing to start with. Um, and it's going to just try, you know, so if the first word in that list is slash login, it's going to try slash login. Then it's going to try slash home, slash dashboard, blah, blah. And it sort of does some auto detection to figure out what a what a default response looks like. So maybe it sends in some slash OXDF and it looks and sees what that is. And then it knows anything that matches that, it's not real. Um, and so you can see it's auto filtering four or four like responses. And then here you can see all the responses that are different from that. And so we're trying 30,000 different things. And these are the ones that show up different. Um, Ferrobuster also does this thing. Sometimes it's nice and sometimes it's not where it actually grabs all the links off the page and adds them in here too. So that's why I get like, even though static API.js is not a part of the word list, it shows up here and same thing with login register. They show up quickly. Um, we can see we do have a, we do have a 301 redirect on this API and a 302 on the um, upload. That's because upload probably requires authentication to get access to. Um, same thing with dashboard here um, versus static and um, API, probably you're just seeing them redirect. You know, this is very common in web servers. If you visit a directory, it will redirect to with a slash on it. And so, and then it doesn't show me what this does here. So, um, oh, and we're already done. This often can take a while, but that was pretty fast, 60 seconds, and I talked right through it. Um, so let's see, what do we want to check out? We already knew about login and register. So we upload, we'll have to get off to get access to. So really API is the thing worth checking out. Let's go ahead and check this out. What happens if we just visit? Uh, yeah, we did see some endpoints already. Um, unable to connect. That's not exactly what I expected. I wonder if did my, my Docker get killed? No. Oh, wait, the port got dropped off. Um, that's weird. I don't, where did I get, where did I drop the port? Oh, in the redirect, it seems the port got dropped. That's weird, but um, I think that that's something the web server probably just was not quite configured for. So, um, okay, let's see. So uh, is this HTTPS? I guess so. That person continue. No, this is not. This is just meant to be HTTP. Cool, okay. Little tangent. Um, so we got we we redirected to API slash, and that just returns a 404. Ferrobuster, by default, when it gets these redirects like to slash API, if slash API slash if API slash exists, will then start recursing into that directory and start you know take the exact same word list and start another thirty thousand requests in slash API. Because there's a 404 for the, just the base route, um, Ferrobuster says, oh maybe I'm, maybe this is a mistake. I'm not going to go down this route. Um, but I do want to look in there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and add API, run this again with slash API and start to look for routes in the API. And I already saw some of these when I was doing the, uh, when I was looking through burp, you know, we had slash API slash login slash API slash, I saw some other things, uh, register, register. So, um, we've seen some of these already. So we're gonna start looking for more. What else can we find? Um, so right away we see, we've got register, we've got login, we got files, which is, so. Um, register and login are both returning 405. That's wrong method. This method is not supported. Um, we've seen those take post requests. We've seen those before. Probably not much we can do with those. Um, 401 is a thing we can't get. We're not supposed to be able to get to files. Um, but docs, docs is interesting right away. So let's go ahead and check that out. Uh, API slash docs. Because maybe they'll just give us all the information we need, or maybe, you know, maybe there might be stuff hidden from it, but you know, maybe there'll be something there that wasn't meant to get public. Um, and, uh, right away, this is a, I can recognize this. Um, this is Swagger. It's a, uh, documentation system that's sort of meant to be auto built from your API. It's super handy. 
Um, and it also, it's cool because you can actually run these requests from within the documentation. So we can look at the login um, thing. It takes a post request. Uh, the body needs to look like this with an email and password. Um, we can run that. So let's see. We can, if you click try it out, uh, we can come down here and actually edit this. So if we say OXCF at novaenergy.com, like that, and our password, do we remember what our password was? OXCF, OXCF, I think. And if we execute this, let's see what happens. Uh, so it, this is the this is the request it sent. Basically, it shows us what it looks like in curl. Um, here's the URL it sent to, and then we get a 400 bad request, inactive user, because I've not um, registered my user yet. Um, I wonder what happens if we do uh, admin Just curiosity. See, is that a real account? Uh, incorrect, you know, a password. So that's that's the thing we saw back on the login screen. Um, so we can we can interact with the API using that. Um, cool. Okay, let's go back here. Oops, let's open you back up. I want to close that. Um, so right away, uh, email verify is here. And what's kind of interesting about that is it is not um, showing a lock or anything. So there's no authentication required to do this. Um, so let's check it out. Can I do an email verification? I'm going to need uh, the email and the token. So presumably, if we go back, let's see, where were we? No, we don't have it up anymore. But uh, Oh, yeah, here. When I click, yeah, I'm guessing the link that comes in must somehow give me as a get request or a post request. Yeah, somehow, somehow it must submit this, this token and my email address to verify that it's correct. And the token's probably the thing that got emailed to me. So, how can we get a hold of that? Um, we can try. Let's just see what happens if we try this out. Um, we enter OXDF at novaenergy.com. And we try to execute this, um, and it's going to say, Sounds valid. Did I mess it up? Uh, I'm missing the quote at the beginning. Try this again. Uh, invalid verification token. So that's not good. Um, let's see what kind of information we can get about the user. So we can come here and try out user details and do, uh, if we do, look, I'm curious, if we do admin at novaenergy.com, is that a, well, maybe we'll find out if that user exists. Um, so here's the admin. Uh, there's a verify token field in there. That's kind of interesting. Um, but what happens? So we did guess correctly that admin exists. If we put in OXDF and run that, um, we have a verify token here. So let's grab this and come down here and come to email verify and put that in as our token and execute this. Email verified successfully. Uh, sweet. So let's come back here and let's come back to login and try this. OXDF at novaenergy.hackthebox. Nope, not dot com. And the password is OXDF, OXDF. And we'll sign it. And we've logged in. Um, this is super cool. And there's our flag.txt right there. So uh, if I click on this, uh, maybe I have to download it. And I can open it. And there's, there's the flag. Um, so that's, that's, that's the challenge. So this challenge was inspired by um, this Medium post bypass email verification in Mozilla um, by AMR Kadri. Um, um, I don't know how to say it, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't want to butcher it too bad. Um, talking about um, a, a bypass verification in a Mozilla product. And basically there's the uh, Mozilla product that handles, um, it's Mozilla's monitor that handles it. has got have been honed in the back end to make sure you don't have uh, bad passwords saved in your Mozilla um, store. Um, but basically they found, you know, when they go to, e when they go to register, um, they said there's a verification link sent out and then they were able to dive in and now they didn't find a swagger thing, but instead they looked at the source code and they found, or this can zoom in, that basically the, the, there's an email and breaches, um, route and where do I go down here? Anyway, that thing is sending back, let's we scroll through here. This is a good read. It's worth taking a look, but I'm just kind of skimming ahead here. You know, the verification token is coming back in the data for that. Um, and so what that means is that if, if an un un unauthorized user can leak that token, they can verify any email they want. And that's just what we showed in the challenge. Um, and so this is this is the, you know, the detailed post here. Again, I'll include a link in the description. Go check it out. Um, here's the actual Hacker One report where they filed this with Mozilla. Um, I love reading these reports. They're super, if you're not familiar with these, um, they're just fun to play through because you actually get to see once they go public, you know, here's the researcher coming in and saying, here's what I found. Uh, here is from Hacker One Triage taking a look and verifying the verifying it. Um, and then Mozilla staff actually comes in and says, thanks for coming in. And, um, you know, you secured Mozilla. So 
Um, these reports are super cool and always worth looking at. They also show real world things where vulnerabilities had an impact on real software. And if you triage these and read through them until you can sort of get a feel for the kinds of vulnerabilities that are out there in the real world. So um, that's it for today. Go check out the CTF. It's going to be a ton of fun. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.